एटीन हंड्रेड आवर्स पाकिस्तान स्टैंडर्ड टाइम असलम दिस इज रेडियो पाकिस्तान द न्यूज रेड बाय हसन गिलानी फर्स्ट द हेडलाइंस Pakistan and IMF have reached an agreement under which Pakistan will soon receive 1.17 billion dollars. Prime Minister lauding the agreement with IMF says it will set the stage to bring the country out of the economic difficulties. Shahbaz Sharif has welcomed Supreme Court's detailed judgment in a Somoto case on former Deputy Speaker National Assembly's ruling. National Disaster Management Authority has issued instructions to concerned federal and provincial ministries to remain watchful and prepared in view of the heavy rains forecast. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, Indian troops have intensified reign of terror by stepping up their cordon and search operations. The UN Security Council has voted unanimously to extend mandate of UN mission helping to implement a December 2018 ceasefire agreement between Yemen and Houthi militia. And now the news in detail. Pakistan and International Monetary Fund have reached an agreement under which Pakistan will soon receive 1.17 billion dollars. In a tweet today, Minister for Finance and Revenue Miftah Ismail announced that agreement has been inked to complete seventh and eighth reviews of Pakistan's extended fund facility. According to a statement by IMF in this regard, IMF board will consider the extension of the facility by the end of June next year to support program implementation and meet the higher financing needs of fiscal year 2023 the statement also issued policy priorities including steadfast implementation of the budget 2022-23 catch up in power sector reforms proactive monetary policy to guide inflation to more moderate levels reducing poverty strengthening social safety and governance the imf team led by nath reporter in its concluding remarks said pakistan is at a challenging economic juncture where high international prices and a delayed policy action resulted in larger fiscal deficits that contributed to rising inflation and eroded reserves Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif says agreement with the IMF has set the stage to bring the country out of economic difficulties. In a tweet today, he felicitated the finance and foreign office teams led ably by Minister for Finance and Revenue Miftah Ismail and Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari for their efforts in getting the International Monetary Fund program revived. The Prime Minister said it is a great teamwork. Minister for Finance and Revenue Miftah Ismail has vowed to provide relief to people by reducing prices of petrol, diesel and other essential commodities following agreement with the IMF. In a statement today he said, "We successfully saved the country from bankruptcy and now we are leading it on the path of progress and stability." The minister said, "We look forward for tough decisions which put the country's economy on the right track." Miftah Ismail congratulated the whole nation on the successful agreement with the IMF and said that he will work harder to improve tax collection and create ease for poor people miftah ismail said imf has appreciated our sasta petrol sasta diesel scheme and benazir income support program Prime Minister Mohammad Shahbaz Sharif has welcomed the Supreme Court's detailed judgment in the So Modo case for ex-Deputy Speaker National Assembly's ruling. In a tweet today, the Prime Minister said the judgment exposes the lies and propaganda by PTI Chairman Imran Khan. He said it is utterly shameful as to how Imran Khan tried to undermine the constitution and manufactured the lie of regime change. Shahbaz Sharif said the Supreme Court's judgment is a must-read for everyone. This is Radio Pakistan. President Dr. Arif Alvi has expressed condolences over telephone to family of Subedar Munir Hussain, who was martyred in an attack in North Waziristan on 26th of last month. The president expressed condolences with the bereaved family and prayed for the patients to bear irreparable loss. He paid homage to martyr for his service to the country. The delegation of Iran led by a special representative for Hajj affairs Allama Sayyid Abdul Fattah Nawab called on Minister for Religious Affairs Mufti Abdul Shakur in Makkah they discussed matters of mutual interest The post Hajj flight operation to bring back 84000 Pakistani Hajjaj begins tomorrow The post Hajj operation will be completed by 15th of Muharram 
Pakistan Meteorological Department has predicted strong weather activity during the next 24 hours to 74 hours over hub dam catchment areas, Karachi and Arabian Sea. Meanwhile, National Disaster Management Authority has issued instructions to concern federal ministries, departments and respective provincial governments, their line departments including PIDs, PDMAs, DDMAs, SIN and Balochistan to remain watchful and prepared. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, Indian troops and police have intensified the reign of terror by stepping up their cordon and search operations and house raids to suppress Kashmiri's ongoing freedom movement. Indian troops, paramilitary and police personnel have increased their search operations and house raids in the name of security measures following the recent killing of a policeman and injuring of two others in an attack by unknown gunmen in Srinagar. The residents of many areas of Srinagar, Badgam, Gandharbal, Kupwara, Bharamula, Islamabad, Pulwama, Shupanya, Kulgam, Doda, Kishtwar, Poonch, Rajori, Kathua districts told the media that Indian forces personnel have made their life a hell. They said that during the operations and house raids, Indian troops and policemen barged into their houses, harassed the inmates, including women, and even vandalized the household goods. The All Bodies Huriyat Conference spokesman in a statement in Srinagar maintained that no amount of Indian state terrorism can subdue the Kashmiri's freedom sentiment and they will continue their struggle till it reached its logical conclusion. He appeals to the international community to hold India accountable for its war crimes and crimes against humanity in the occupied territory. Sri Lanka has declared a state of emergency after President Rajapakse and his wife fled to Maldives. Prime Minister Nareen Vikramasinghe has become acting president. In a TV address, acting president ordered military commanders and the police chief to take all necessary measures to restore normalcy and order. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has termed the recent brokered agreement to facilitate Ukrainian grain exports as a ray of hope for those suffering from hunger worldwide. His comments came just minutes after Turkish Defense Minister Halusi Akar announced that Turkish, Ukrainian, Russian and UN officials agreed to establish a coordination center in Istanbul to facilitate the Ukrainian grain exports. Antonio Guterres thanked Turkey for its outstanding efforts during the talks. The UN Security Council has voted unanimously to extend the mandate of the UN mission helping to implement a December 2018 ceasefire agreement between Yemeni government and Houthi militia. The Security Council welcomed a two-month truce between the internationally recognized government and the Houthis. It was extended for an additional two months on the second of the last month. The Council called for a strengthened truce to be translated into durable ceasefire and an inclusive, comprehensive political settlement under the auspices of the United Nations. And now the weather. Widespread heavy rain is expected in Sindh, Balochistan, South Punjab and Lower Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, while more scattered rain wind is likely in Islamabad, Upper Punjab, Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan during the next 12 hours. And now to end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Pakistan and IMF have reached an agreement under which Pakistan will soon receive $1.17 billion. Prime Minister lauding the agreement with the IMF says it will set the stage to bring the country out of the economic difficulties. Shahbaz Sharif has welcomed Supreme Court's detailed judgment in So Moto case on former Deputy Speaker National Assembly's ruling. National Disaster Management Authority has issued instructions to concern federal and provincial ministries to remain watchful and prepared in view of the heavy rains forecast. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, Indian troops have intensified train of terror by stepping up their cordon and search operations. UN Security Council has voted unanimously to extend mandate of UN mission helping to implement a December 2018 ceasefire agreement between Yemen and Houthi militia. 
this is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash radio Pakistan news official.